Hey everybody, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and this is the market radar for the 1st of July. Uh, for the end of the week here, we have two days left on Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday, we have the jobs report. Big news out crossing right now as this goes out on uh, Tuesday evening. Um, the deadline has crossed for Greece to uh, pay its loan, and officially, Greece has defaulted on the $1.8 billion it owes the International Monetary Fund. So everyone's tweeting about this. This has been in uh, focus for the last few days. This is definitely uh, part of the reaction in the market. But otherwise, you know, we're also seeing that daily stochastic rotate over. And I put a lot into that. So, I mean, even though we're seeing that pullback happen a little bit faster, um, this has not really broken, um, you know, kind of a... Um, a pattern that's been playing out for years, you know, that rotation higher, the pullback, the move higher, the pullback, and each one of these oversold levels that have come back on the daily, which don't happen too often, maybe every other month or a few months, um, you know, tend to be a great opportunity in this market. And as we crossed over here, you know, that was just showing us, hey, the momentum has shifted, we're getting that pullback, and we haven't been oversold yet. It just happens to be that tomorrow we'll probably enter that oversold level uh, coinciding with the bail, with the uh, the um, the default. Now the default has been talked about enough that I think everyone has probably understand that they weren't going to pay. I mean, they've said that yesterday, they said today, all day today, they're not going to pay. Um, you know, what are you going to do about it? Basically, uh, they announced that they're going to have the referendum, uh, the vote um, this Sunday, and that vote really becomes the next big factor here because the vote. For a yes or a no, really determines basically if the Greek uh, Greece stays in the euro, pr stays in the European Union. Um, that's basically what it is, and probably you know in some cases probably determines the government going forward on Greece, if uh, a yes or a no. So uh, that still kind of is playing part. We talked about Tuesday on the uh, HPS market or HPS video for this week, and on the market radar radar put out this sat the past Saturday. We talked about. The market being under a lot of pressure probably Monday, Tuesday, just based off of this news. We want to get through Tuesday and where we're going to update you on Tuesday. And this is a Tuesday evening update. So we're a little bit closer to oversold. We're actually down off of a level that has, you know, I mean, these levels play out over and over again. We came down really quick down to that one, two, three pattern. The one, two, three pattern is based off of this old, old channel here. Um, this down channel line and this channel line, these pivot areas and this pivot area. Now, just to correct that, let's just make sure everything is right here. So you take this parallel line, you can really see it hit that pivot area there. I'm going to create a parallel line with that, and I'm just going to drag it to this area right there, and that's where it falls on there. So we we didn't get down to it 100%. We bounced off. It almost looks like we want to get down to that level. Um, the, the interesting thing here. You know, the appearance of this pattern right now is a bearish, bearish flag. I mean, but the hourly has not really turned up yet. And there's a good, good, you know, there's a good notion that this actually continues to be embedded down here. We pull back and we actually tag this lower trend line. This lower trend line could come into play easily tomorrow. Um, and with that being said, you know, this will enter that oversold level. So we might have a, a, what we call a 60 daily setup, which we don't get too often. It's usually a very strong buy signal. And the fact that we're going to have the referendum, um, my, my thoughts on the referendum, the vote going forward. Well, tomorrow's another day. You know, tomorrow they're going to actually have some proposals being, you know, given to the EU and the EU is going to make their decisions and, you know, might send them back saying, no, this is not good enough. You got to, you know, we're not, we're going to hold our ground. And then uh, they're going to say, well, we're going to have the vote. And if the vote goes yes, they're going to, you know, maybe abide by the uh, EU's, uh, you know, guidelines or, again, you know, step up to the plate. And if they vote no, basically that's a, that's a, a vote to uh, probably leave the euro. So that's a major thing. And I would say over the next two days we're going to have a lot of commentary on how this vote is going to play out if we get to that point. You know, the, the point is there's an opportunity that we might not even get to that vote. They, this might be a big cat and mouse game going into, uh, into this weekend. Maybe they want to have the vote, but they're, they're kind of threatening the vote because they, they're saying, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to, we're going to see how it feels. We're going to, you know, um, not pay the loan, but we're going, to, we're going to, you know, kind of put that carrot out there. 
uh, at Sunday and see if anything happens. Anyway, whatever. They didn't pay. It's news. It was news. They defaulted. You know, they're getting the downgrades. You know, tomorrow they get downgraded to D ratings uh, or selective default or D ratings. You know, and that's it's priced in. You know, in my opinion, that's priced in. That's been, uh, you know, so interesting action after the markets. We have the NBG, the National Bank of Greece, actually trading higher. And the GREK here was trading higher earlier today. Um, but anyway, that is going to be the news uh, focus tomorrow. So, you know, the scenario I would love to see play out, yes, maybe there's a little bit more reaction. Um, do we have a breakdown here? Do we get down to that lower trend line, uh, that lower trend line, the 2050 area uh, below us? Maybe 2050 to 2040 area would give us a 10-point range. I could, I could probably give you a better uh, look at that. That's probably down in that uh, 20... You know, it could be anywhere in this 2040 to 2050 range, this lower trend line. Does it get tagged? If it gets tagged, it looks like a perfect setup uh, because that'll definitely confirm that daily into an oversold level. The uh, hourly, the trend line, everything will look really good technically uh, would be good. But some, some, for some reason, I think that could be news that comes out and, um, and messes with that pattern. You know, the pattern tells me great level down here at 24, you know, 2040 to 2050. Uh, you know, the behind the scenes bargaining that's going on, it's going to happen tomorrow morning. Don't forget the Euro, uh, European markets open up uh, early morning, 3 o'clock. And, um, you know, from that point on, we are going to uh, probably get some fl a flow of news coming out of the European markets. And that actually could have uh, some a market moving news. So when we wake up tomorrow, Futures could be up higher, could be down lower. If they get down lower, these are the levels I want to pay attention to. This, this is a very important level. Either way, I think that we're closer to a rally. Um, if we did get down to that level, I think I think it would be a great opportunity to take uh, some type of uh, trade to the upside off of that trend line. If we don't, we get some positive news. Well, you know, we're already uh, close. You know, to, by tomorrow we might actually start off in an oversold level. I think we're uh, one to two days away from a bounce. Um, Needless of what the referendum uh, comes out to be. I mean, a vote of no uh, means they leave the euro. I think that would spook the market a little bit more. But, again, we said that we talked about this uh, last week, and I think, you know, from a short-term effect, uh, then all, all of a sudden people realize, and, all right, that, that the, you know, the weakness is out of the market now. The, the weak link is, is gone. All the worry is gone. We're beyond that. Then the market rallies even after uh, Greece announces the exit from the euro, if, whatever that process is. I'm not an expert on that process and how that process would uh, play out. And if it can happen at any, you know, any, uh, any time frame, that seems logical. You know, it, it, apparently it's going to take months, if not years, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, I've read today that, you know, if they, they have about two years to pay their debt before they, they get kicked out. And I don't know if there is a clause in the, uh, the treaty that kicks them out. So there's a lot of gray area here. I'm not, the, I'm not an expert on it, but I do love the levels uh, and that continue to play out. The flags continue to play out. The wedges continue to play out. Um, the stochastics continue to play out. So we are entering a big zone, a very big zone coming up uh, tomorrow. It could be that 200-period moving average. It could be the lower trend line. It could be oversold on daily and on the 60. It could be a rock star set up across the board in the face of Greece. All right. Let me put this on the rate market radar. Also, for those out there looking at the chart, you're seeing that the uh, that the uh, the ES is not open here, and it's due to this leap section, leap second that has been added uh, to the time machine, the, the atomic clock, whatever you want to call it, and they've delayed uh, some of the futures open. I kind of compensate for that, I guess. You know, safety features and stuff, and. Uh, and that's what we're waiting for. So I don't know the exact open. I think it may be, uh, you know, maybe it's going to open up here at uh, 645. I'm not exactly sure. If anybody has, I think bring it. Uh, I did see cross by before. I just didn't uh, pay attention to it. So, you know, that's where we stand going into tomorrow. I was hoping for a better, you know, better, uh, better opportunity. But I honestly think that, you know, the news is at play here. I mean, there's a major... A major vote coming up in in the uh, in Greece, 
that's due on Sunday. If nothing comes of this tomorrow, uh, going into it. Also, added to this, so let me make my market radar. I am calling for an update tomorrow, you know. It could start off with a little further push down, but I am calling for a late-day rally. So, you know, I would say, you know, just to kind of give us a little look at it, I would say a little rally, you know, a little breakdown here, if we even get that. Um, you know, pushing back down through this flag. Get as close as we can to that. If we get down to that and tag that thing and leave a nice little 60-minute candle, we're going to be on board uh, with some uh, some calls on that. And then we're going to push up higher. All right, that's my scenario. I think, um, you know, there's two days left. We have a jobs report also coming out. That could, that could mess with the markets itself. There is a lot of news out here. But technically, I like to see that daily uh, get a little bit more oversold, seeing that five-minute. And also, tomorrow is uh, Jeff Hirsch, our man at uh, Stock Trader Almanac here, tweeted, Stock Trader Almanac tweeted earlier today that, if I can find it now, um, here it is. I want to give you this. This is uh, quite interesting here. I talked about this in a research video. I just did a little research before here. July 1st is the most bullish day of the year over the last 21 years. Now, uh, you know, you could go to this site. It's, uh, you know, Trader's Almanac, or Almanac Trader, Jeff Hirsch. Yeah, you'll find it. There's no problem. Almanac Trader. Uh, July 1st trading day is the fourth best performing trading day of the year. Fourth best best performing first trading day of all 12 months with a Dow Jones average gain in a cumulative <laughs> that's a better way of saying that 852 uh, points rounded down um, since 1998 over the past 21 years the Dow Jones industrial average first trading day of July has produced gains 81% of the time with an average gain of almost a half a percent S&P 500 has advanced 85% of the time Average gain of 45 percent, a point, uh, a little under a half a percent. Nasdaq again slightly weaker. No other day of the year exhibits this much across the board strength, which makes a solid case for declaring uh, July 1st the most bullish day of the year over the past 21 years. So, um, and then there's a bigger image here. I want to post this. Um, these are all the first July 1st and July 2nds. Uh, you can see they're mostly green on the screen. But we're going to go, uh, you know, we'll definitely focus on that. That adds a little to uh, the call tomorrow. But I think overall, even if we do see a little weakness in the morning, I think we reverse quickly. Um, then we start heading up. What Best case scenario, I love to, you know, hate to see that, down, that gap down. But, you know, lots of times if you gap down a real fast move down to that lower trend line, you start off the day off of that and it's off to the races. So that's where we have it. Uh, again, bearish flag. It does look like we have a little further downside, but uh, after we get through that flag to the downside, we'll take out the lows. And then from that point on, we're looking for that rally to start at some point tomorrow and get that bounce going into uh, Thursday. And then, uh, of course, Sunday, I, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, the negative, uh, a no vote probably could uh, affect the market negatively, but I think it's going to be a short-term uh, negative effect, and I think that's going to be an op opportunity. We might not even get a negative effect. We actually could get the market to rally on a no vote. We've seen stranger things in the market. But that's what we're leaving it at. Uh, again, it's just harder now to, uh, you know, look at some some things. I want to um, just touch base on a couple stocks here in, in with the market radar. There's a great flag here, CVS. Um, you take a look at the hourly. It's just gotten oversold here. This is really a, a beautiful setup. We've traded this one before, and uh, it, you know it's typically we wait on that 60-minute time frame. But we also have a beautiful flag here. Yes, we're pulling back here. We're kind of grinding back down, and we'd love to get the daily setup. But in lots of cases, in a very bullish stock, that flag tends to push back up. We never get that full rotation. So is this a situation where we're not going to get a full rotation? Um, it just looks strong. Something to pay attention to, but I even have a bigger one and this again I want to put this out because there's not a lot to be added to the HBS watch list But I want to you know put this out for everyone green uh, GNCR GNCR GNRC sorry 
<laughs> Generac. Uh, the um, the move down today, that fast, quick move down, took out uh, yesterday's lows. All right, we took out uh, yesterday's the day before lows, or actually when the stochastics here kind of, we actually had that 60 divergence, but we also have that, or five minute divergence. I even looked at the 60, the 60 now. But the daily here is really something because the market has kind of moved higher. We gapped lower, we took out the lows. We really didn't get corrected here. We didn't really cross over. Um, it, it really wants to hold going forward. So my guess is that, you know, that little flush just taking out those recent lows, those least recent lows right back here um, at 39.62, 39.56, uh, 39.56 was the recent low. This is 39.26. So it's a, yeah, it definitely took out the lows. I like when that happens, uh, but there is a little lower. Let's see here, a little lower low underneath us, and underneath that there is. But um, as a divergence, this this is very interesting to me. I think we could actually um, trade this soon. I discussed it a little bit more in detail on the on the research video, but basically, uh, you know, this is uh, starting to the wind up wind up here. Um, I like the divergence, so I'm going to put this on the focus list for tomorrow. Another one on the focus list for tomorrow will be Costco, and Costco's on a lower trend line. We're oversold. Uh, you know, it's it's if we see a little weakness in this. You know, it's usually a good opportunity to get into it. We're off that lower trend line. That's the big uh, the big level there, and we're right off and holding that level right now. And that's where we sit right now. There's no reversal candle, but we are oversold on the daily, oversold on the hourly, and uh, over you know five minutes chopping around. We'll see how this this will be on the focus list for tomorrow too. And until we get through some of the volatility here, um, you know, and if anything here to shorten week, we also have news again, big news tomorrow. So there is a lot of news. One of the better weeks to probably just kind of let this thing play out a bit. But uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Again, I'm giving you a two-hour update potential tomorrow. Two-hour update com combined with the, you know, just based off the technicals. Two-hour update. And again, if you go to uh, Market Radar, um, you're going to get that. I'll give you the link to that. You're going to get that in your emails. But you'll probably see it on YouTube too because I'm putting this all out there. You, you'll know that the uh, a two a two. Uh, Let me let me get this up over here. Um, maximum trade alerts. This was the, the latest um, market radar we went out on uh, Saturday, but uh, again, we're going to see that we're going to have a two-star, uh, a two-hour up here, and a two-hour up represents a setup with at least two indicators lined up with a buy zone. These signals need to be weighted with the current market sentiment, and if there's any positive momentum to the markets to give this higher probability signal. Um, I'm giving this here because of some, uh, you know, mostly uh, some of the technicals all lining up. And, uh, you know, even some of the uh, stati st statistics uh, from the Almanac here has a very bullish day, uh, beginning of the month. A lot of different things here playing out. So we're going to go with a two-hour update tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Don't want to miss it. I'll see you in the markets. And uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early, we'll be there at 8 o'clock, daytradingradio.com. And uh, we'll see you then.